Welcome back to the series of videos on how to make mini coracles. The two coracles that I've been making are pictured here. and One of them was made in the workshop and the other in the garden. The garden one was made out of bits of stick that I found lying around and I used paper that was from the recycling bin to skin it. To find out more about building both of the cutters then and have a look at the rest of the videos. One of the reasons for building two cutters though was to show that you can do a really nice one using well prepared materials and maybe a little special materials but also you can have fun building something just of what you find. This is what it looked like at the end of the day. Will it work? Okay so I brought in the uh, cut I made from random things last night to, uh, well, I was a little bit worried it might get rained on. There is a little problem with taking something out of its frame. And that is, if it's made out of springy wood and it's not held together really tightly, then it might spring apart and explode. So let's see what happened. Yes, as I feared. The band that I wove around the top there wasn't really made out of long bendy wood enough, it wasn't overlapped enough, so the whole thing, instead of staying like a nice walnut shell, uh, has exploded. What to do? Hmm. Well, I can try reweaving it and then attaching the skin again. Aha! And I, in order to keep these bent, well, If I tie them together with string across the top here, then that will keep them bent without having the ground to hold them in. Let's see what happens. Learning from my mistakes, if you put a first layer of string round before you start weaving in your sticks, then that will help give your boat more stability from the start. And then when you pull it out of the soil, then the rods won't unbend and go flat completely straight away. So here it is, the great adventure. Uh, I've made the boats, but will they float? Time to check. You might be able to see that I've painted the outside of it. Uh, yeah, makes it decorated, makes it a bit nicer. But also it's like giving it a second skin. If you've got a continuous skin of paint, that helps with waterproofing and preserving. Aha! Look! It's a boat and it's on the water and it's not sinking. Bit wobbly though. So let's put some ballast in. There we are. As you can see, it sits lower in the water, uh, but it means it's more stable, less tippy. Did you cross the Irish Sea on one of those? Well, maybe the first time. Let's see how boat number two does. So again, floats. Bounces around quite happily. A little bit tippy. So let's put some ballast in it. Ah, that feels much better. So you see how it tops, but it's always returning back to a nice stable position. I wonder, <laughs> well a boat to carry yourself is great, but cargo would be a really good thing. So put some cargo in it. Aha! So as the mass in the boat increases, 
the amount of water which is displaced by it increases too, and it sinks lower into the water. But still, it's floating around nicely. It's a bit more effort to push it through the water. But it's got more momentum, so it comes back again. All in all, a pretty successful experiment, I think. And again, the paint on the outside is helping uh, make a layer, uh, a waterproof layer, so the water doesn't sink into the, into the uh, paper and make the paper soggy, which would then lead to holes. So, two cutters, quickly built. One made just using stuff around your house, and all it needs is another piece of paper stuck on it. Um, if I wanted to keep them for a long time, then I need to varnish them and make them really solid. But uh, yeah, have fun at making yours at home. But there's a hole in the boat. That's going to need patching. <laughs>